Wow. What a, what a wonderful time already this morning. Anybody hot besides me? Uh, Exodus, the 14th chapter this morning. Let me say, I appreciate you coming out this morning and worshiping the Lord with us. And always try to, to let people understand this. It, it doesn't matter to me if it's your first time here or you've been here many times. Our prayer is for everyone that walks through these doors. They walk through here, and when they walk back out, they walk out lifted up, encouraged, blessed. And if they happen not to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they walk out of here saved. That's what it's all about. I was talking to a preacher this past week, and I said, you know, there's a lot of things God has for us. And a lot of things that God wants to do for us. But the most important thing that God wants to do to everyone is to save them. That's what he wants. And I'm glad he did that. How about you? Exodus, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. The Bible says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians. They're saying we would rather have been slaves than that we should die in the wilderness. That's why God calls them, called them a rebellious and a stiff-necked people. Then he went on to say this. And Moses said unto the people, listen to what, the, what, what the Moses says, Fear thou not. <laughs> Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today... Ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Uh, you look at that and you think, wow, God promised that he's going to take care of it, and yet they still didn't believe it. The 21st verse says this. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And took off their chariot wheels. <laughs> Man, when God does it, he does it right. Took off their chariot wheels. And they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Can I get a whoo? Let me tell you. When God does it, God does it right. And I want you, if you would, this morning to bow your heads with me. We're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to help us today as we endeavor to minister his words. Father, we're thankful today for the opportunity to be in your house, to worship you, and to lift up your precious name. Lord, I thank you for your blessings. I thank you, Lord, for your spirit we've already felt here this morning, for the touches that this people's already received. Uh, but Father, as we enter into the word this morning that you've laid upon our heart, uh, we ask you first of all to anoint me and cause me to be able to say exactly what needs to be said. Uh, every thought that enters my mind, Lord, let it be your thoughts. Every word that issues out of my mouth, let it be your, your words this morning. Uh, I pray every heart and every ear to be open this morning to receive the exact things you want them to receive. Uh, lift everyone up. Bless them this morning for being here. Uh, and Lord, I pray that everyone in here would be encouraged in the Lord their God. Uh, for Father, we ask this this morning. We thank you for it and we call it done. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray and everyone shouted this morning. Amen. I want to preach to you for a few moments this morning if I might. And I want to entitle my message, He Always Makes 
away. Even in the impossible situations of life, God always makes a way when we believe. I get to thinking about the Israelites and as they were in Egypt and they were crying unto God because of all the things they were having to go through while they were there. And folks, in essence, they were slaves to the Egyptian people. They were the ones doing all the work while the Egyptians sat back and allowed uh, them to do all the work and they did nothing. And, and, and finally, after the plagues took place and after all this, and, and Pharaoh said, get them out of here because they would had all they wanted. Uh, and, and he instructed uh, the Israelites, or Moses did, uh, to borrow from their neighbors to take everything they could. And you know what? They took the riches of Egypt with them as they walked out. Now, that's God right there. But it goes a little step farther than that. Uh, as they begin to, to do the journey that they were on, uh, and, and I want you to listen to me. Uh, at, at daytime, there was a pillar of cloud. There was a big cloud that went before them. Uh, and at nighttime, there was a fire. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but if I'm going somewhere and I see a big old fire in front of me, I'm going to think, whoo, or a big cloud in front of you. Everywhere you went, didn't matter where you were, there was a, a, a cloud and there was a pillar. And they went through there. They were seeing God's hand in everything that was happening to them. Uh, from the fact that they walked out of Egypt free uh, and walked out with all the wealth of Egypt uh, to the fact uh, that they had a, a cloud that led them wherever they went during the day and a fire that led them at night. Uh, everywhere they went, folks, there was a rock that followed them where they could get the water they needed. Uh, God gave them the food to eat every night so they would have it for the next day. Uh, God provided 100% uh, for the children of Israel. Uh, and the first time, uh, adversity came their way when they came up to the Red Sea. Uh, and they always look around and they're thinking, huh, uh, how are we going to get across this? How are we going to go here? Uh, and they look behind them and all of a sudden they saw the armies of Pharaoh coming after them. Uh, and you know what? You would think, well, their faith is high because they already saw what God did. Uh, they already saw how God brought the plagues down. Uh, and it only happened to the Egyptians. It didn't happen to the children of Israel. Uh, only to those that were not believers uh, did it happen to. You would think uh, that they would look at that and say, you know what? Uh, we're serving a great big God today. Uh, we got a God who's taking care of us today. Uh, but you know what they did? They complained. They looked at Moses. They said, uh-huh. I'm going to put this in my words, okay? Are you crazy? You brought us out of Egypt, out of here in the middle of nowhere, so that we could die out here, and we don't even have any place to be buried because at least in Egypt we had graves. And you brought us out here to die. And you know what? Uh, so the birds are going to eat us. Uh, all the animals are going to devour us. All this. You brought us out here. Uh, and you brought. Man, he brought them out because they cried to God and God heard their cry. Moses didn't want to do it. If you ever deal with a bunch of people, you'll understand why he didn't. Do you know how hard it is to keep a bunch of people happy? Can I take this a step farther? Impossible! Somebody will always get something in a bind. And they'll get into a shape. Well, I don't like the way such and such looks or how this happens or the song they sing. Who do they think they are getting up there and doing that? Let me tell you what, people are never happy. If you got about four hours, I'll be glad to sit down and talk to you about it. And you would think. That if you had already seen the hand of God doing the great things that God had already done. The first time you came to adversity, your faith would come alive and you would understand that God always makes a way. You would understand that. But when adversity comes, most people throw their hands in the air uh, and say, God's forsaken us. He isn't around anymore. And God's saying, hey, hang on a minute. Uh, bring your faith alive and watch me move. Bring your faith alive and see what I can do for you. And I want you to understand something this morning. Uh, as the children of Israel was at the Red Sea and they were getting ready. Uh, and they looked behind and saw Pharaoh coming. Uh, and they were griping at Moses and saying, uh, you know, at least we could have died back there. We could have went back here and still been slaves. But we could die there. And Moses said these words to them. 
Fear ye not. Woo! Fear not. Stand still. Sometimes people just need to shut up and stand still. Quit complaining. Quit singing the blues. Quit doing all this stuff. Just shut up. Oh, preacher told us to shut. Yes, I am. Just shut up, Ronnie, and stand still. Wait on God. Because I'm going to tell you what, if you believe the word, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. He already knows where you're at. He knows what you're in the midst of. But not only that, God has already made a way to bring you out of that or he wouldn't put you there. And so here he is standing there saying, you know what, uh, just shut up, stand still, bring your faith alive and watch me move. Uh, and as he did that, the Bible says that that cloud went behind them uh, between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Uh, and God caused that wind to blow from the east. Uh, and that Red Sea that was in floodplain uh, began to stand up on a heap. Uh, and it began to dry out. Uh, and a ground that should never have been solid, uh, the whole nation of Israel uh, walked across on dry ground uh, and went through that very storm uh, that they were facing that moment. Uh, you know what? They complained. Uh, they did it all. But Moses said, uh, fear not. Uh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, for this people that is troubling you today, uh, after today you'll see them no more. When God fights the battle, folks, he fights it right. Most people don't understand this. When the Egyptians followed uh, Israel in, I'm guaranteeing you, they were confident. Uh, well, if they can walk across on dry ground, we can too. That's how the world thinks. Well, if the Christian can do it, we can do it. Number one, Christian, you shouldn't be doing what the world's doing. You should not be wavering in your faith. Hello, I'm going to ask you a question here. How many of you has God ever answered a prayer for? Woo. How many of you has God ever brought you out of a problem? Ever healed your body? Ever met your need? Ever delivered you? How many of you did God save out of the wretchedness of sin uh, and give you hope and give you eternal life? Uh, I'm telling you, you should never waver in your faith because if God can save you, he can do anything. Uh, if he can take the wretchedness of sin in your life and forgive you uh, and cause you to be whole, uh, you should never waver. Why? Uh, because the God that saves is a God that delivers. Uh, the God that delivers is a God that heals. Uh, the God that heals is a God that brings you through it. Uh, the God that is in your life uh, and that we serve is a God that does it all. He always makes a way. Pharaoh and his army begin to go through on that dry ground. I'm going to tell you, they were cocky. Don't think they weren't. What's this? They're walking. We're in chariots. Uh huh. God took the chariot wheels off. Y'all hear me? They thought they had it made. We're going to overtake them. God took the wheels off the chariots and they were having to drag them without wheels. You ever drag anything without a wheel? I don't care how big a horses you got, they get tired. They got out into the midst of the sea. If you go on down through and you begin to read a little bit farther. God told Moses to stretch your hand forth one more time. Uh, Moses stood up, he stretched his hand forth, and the water that stood on heap on the left and on the right uh, began to come down. Uh, and Pharaoh and his entire army uh, was destroyed by the hand of God. Uh, Israel never had to raise a hand. Uh, they never had to fight a battle with Egypt. Uh, God took care of it. God fought it. Uh, God made the way. Uh, and I'm telling you, God can still do it today. I'm telling you right now, I told Rick up there, well, I said, Rick, I'm about to get saved. <laughs> Susie says, it's about time. <laughs> How can you not believe in a powerful God when you see what he does in your life? How can you not believe? When God has already 
done so much for all of us. <laughs> Ooh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Every day that I serve him, I'm blessed. And I'm going to tell you what. I may never be some uh, very well-known person, and I'll be honest with you, I hope I don't. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with people like that. Well, that's an awful thing for a preacher to say, not want to deal with people. Change shoes for a little bit. You'll understand. Oh, I love y'all, but I like when I can go home and you can too. I did say that, and I meant it. I do love you, but I don't want to live with you. Any more than you want to live with me. Can you imagine a time in your life where there was no God? I know in my life when there was no God because I didn't serve him. I wasn't that old. I wasn't that bad. But I'm going to tell you what. I had no joy like I have today. I had no help like I have today, Cola. I had no peace like I have today. I still have problems. Uh, I still have trials, Mark, that come up. Uh, I still have things that happen that I don't like. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I've learned uh, that in everything that happens, there's a reason. Uh, and God has already made a way for me to come out of that. Uh, on top, let me tell you what, folks. Uh, I walk in victory, not in defeat. I walk in the fullness of God, uh, not in the defeat of this world. Uh, well, uh, I've got all kinds of things that are going wrong in my life. Uh, I've got financial need. Uh, I've got physical need. Uh, I've got spiritual need. Uh, I've got things that are going. I'm having uh, relationship problems. Uh, I'm having problems at work. Uh, let me tell you what. Uh, you are not facing anything that something has, somebody has already faced it, uh, and God has already brought them out of it, uh, and God knows uh, what's happening in your life, uh, and God God knows how to take you out of it. But you've got to bring your faith. You've got to bring your faith alive. If you don't believe, and you have what's called unbelief, guess what you have just done? You have tied the hands of God. That is the only thing that stops God from moving is your lack of faith. I'm going to tell you a story. Y'all listen to me here real quickly. I love this story. Oh, I love this story. The disciples were on a ship. And they were going across. And it was at a certain time of night. And they looked out and they saw something walking on the water coming towards them. Now, I don't know about you. When I'm on my boat on the lake, if somebody's walking on the water, I'm going the other way. All of a sudden, they saw somebody walking out there. All the disciples were there, but only one of them exercised faith. Peter looked out and he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. That person walking on the water said, come. Oh, that, that's all it took. No. That man had to step down over the side of a perfectly safe ship. And believe that he could walk on the water Mike, just like Jesus was walking. guys I'm walking on water that's not what he did he had his eyes on Jesus and then for a moment listen to me he took his eyes off Jesus and he saw the waves 
he felt the wind and he began to sink. Uh oh. When you take your eyes off Jesus and you look at your problem and you quit looking at your solution, you will begin to sink. He called out, Jesus! Now, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, it wasn't some little mediocre holler. He was hollering, Jesus, help me. Have mercy on me. Do something. I'm going down. Jesus reached out, uh, and he got a hold of him, and he came right back. There. Let me tell you what. Uh, the minute you put your face and your eyes back on Jesus, uh, he'll bring you out of wherever you are, uh, and he'll give you and bring you back to the top of the problem, the trial. Uh, people are struggling with things they shouldn't be struggling with uh, because God is bigger than anything you'll ever face. Uh, people are struggling with need. Let me tell you what. Uh, give, and it shall be given back to you. Uh, people are struggling with trials. Uh, cast all your cares upon the Lord because uh, he cares for you. Uh, people are struggling with affliction he says uh, with these stripes ye are healed uh, there's nothing you face uh, that God has not already made provision for you to come out of it but I've been too bad we all have all have sinned and come short of the glory of God there's none righteous no not one every one of us have, have sinned in our life but thanks be to God that gaveth us the victory uh, and brought us out of that sin you know, so I said, brought us out of it. That means you're not in it anymore, but you're out of it. Hello. There's a lot of people think as long as you go to church on Sunday, you can do what you want through the week. And I got a rude awakening. They're, they got a rude awakening one of these days. This is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week salvation. It's not just because you're around certain people, you act a certain way. Folks, you live for the Lord all of the time. You mean to tell me I can't be doing the things that I want to do at work? Nope, not if it's against the word. I can't tell the dirty jokes. You know what? Don't know why I'm going here, but I'm getting ready to. You know what is sad to me? How many people that sit in church pews and think they can commit adultery and have affairs and it's okay? I don't care how long you think uh, that you've been saved. If you're out doing these things, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm telling you I am. You shouldn't be doing it. Oh, you kind of got quiet on that one. Sin will separate you from God. Oh, you fanatical preacher. No, I'm just a preacher preaching the word. Has nothing to do with fanatics. What it is, is folks, we got to learn to live right. And when we live right, then we can expect God to do in our lives what God already wants to do. You want to be blessed? Serve the Lord. Live for Him. Follow His word. Do what He said do. Folks, it ain't hard. Live for Him. Follow the word. If the word says do it, do it. If the word says don't do it, don't do it. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what, you'll find you are blessed beyond measure. Uh, and you'll find that your life will be fuller than you ever thought it could be. You'll find uh, that in the midst of all things. Uh, and let me say something real quickly here. Uh, and, and I want you to understand this. I don't care what sin you have or are committing right now. Uh, if you will cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, he will not only forgive it, uh, he'll forget it, uh, he'll cast it away from you, and you can start new. Uh, so if you're doing whatever it is, uh, stop. Quit, ask the Lord to forgive you, pick yourself up, and walk in the power and in the glory of the Lord, and then feast on the blessings that God has. Ooh, that's good preaching. I'm getting hot, too. I don't care where you are or what you're going through. God always makes a way. Even when you can't see it. 
even when you can't understand it, God always makes a way. In closing this morning, musicians, if you would. The word of the Lord tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And all God requires of us is righteousness and faith. If, I'm going to tell you something here real quickly. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews eleven six 6 says this, for without faith it is impossible to please God. For first you must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I believe that. How about you? So all God wants is us to have faith. And if we really have faith, we'll not struggle with following what his word says to do because we know for everything we do for God, he does back for us even more. I'm living proof. I told someone this past week, I don't even, don't even know who I told. I just know this. God has proved himself over and over and over again that he's faithful. In fact, Jeff and Sherry Easter sing a song over and over again and again. God is faithful. And I want you to know God will never let you down. He will never turn his back on you, and he will never be late. He always moves when we allow him to move. All we got to do is believe. Would you stand with me this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one in this church looking around for a moment if you would. When God impressed my heart to preach this, I thought, wow, this is powerful, Lord. But it's powerful for a reason. If we take this and believe it and apply it to our life, whatever we're going through, we're going to come out on the other side in total victory. All we got to do is believe. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. No one looking around for a moment, if you would. You're standing here in this church this morning. You listen to what this preacher said. First of all, you got things in your life. When I'm talking about things, I'm talking about sin. That shouldn't be there. You're involved in things you shouldn't be involved in. You're doing things you shouldn't be doing. And you know right now that you need to get this under the blood. You need to ask Jesus to forgive you. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Pastor, I need Jesus. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? I need Jesus to forgive me of the things that are in my life right now that shouldn't be there. Anyone else? Come on. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? There's things that are happening. It's controlling my life right now, and it don't need to be controlling my life. I need God to control my life. Anyone else right now, lift your hand up. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? I need to surrender all to him this morning. Everything that I am, I need to give to God right now. Would you slip your hand up? Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? I'm not going to make you get out of your seat this morning. I want you to understand things in your life that shouldn't be there, you've got to get them out so that you can open the avenues for God to do what God wants to do. Anyone else right now say, Pastor, I need God to absolutely cleanse me of all this stuff 
that's dragging me down, and I need my faith increased. Would you slip your hand up right now? My goodness, thank you for those hands. Anyone else? I need my faith to come alive. Maybe you're standing here today and you're doing everything that you can, but yet you're still struggling with something. And you're struggling with the fact uh, that you need your faith to come alive so God can do what God wants to do. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, I'm going to believe God. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Come on. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? It's a choice, folks. You can struggle and let it get the best of you. Or you can surrender to Jesus and let him have it. And when you give it to him, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Because the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. For all things are possible to him that believeth. I want you right now. If you raise your hand, if you didn't raise your hand, it doesn't matter to me. We're going to pray. And for those of you that will, I want you to slip your hand towards heaven right now. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you pray however you can pray. But if you will, slip your hands toward heaven right now. And we're going to ask Almighty God to begin to work and begin to minister in every life here this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, you see every person in this church this morning. Lord, those with their hands raised, and Lord, those that, that really don't have them up yet. Uh, but my God, it's still the same. We believe in you uh, for the miracles. Uh, we're believing you for the deliverance. Uh, we're believing you, Lord, this morning for the help. Uh, my God, that you would move as only you can move, uh, that you would touch. Lord, those that are struggling this morning uh, with things in their life that shouldn't be there. Uh, Lord, as they call upon you right now uh, and they ask you to forgive them, I pray, Lord, not only forgive them, but get it out of their life. Uh, take their very desires away. Uh, Lord, the very temptations take it out of their life. Uh, Lord, those this morning that are struggling with problems, trials, tribulations, whatever it is, uh, I ask you, my God, right now, uh, just to begin to move uh, and lift them up and strengthen them. Uh, Lord, I pray, encourage them. Uh, increase their faith right now. Uh, Lord, lift them up above all this uh, and bring the victory uh, and the deliverance that they need. Uh, Lord, those this morning that just want more of you, uh, I pray, saturate them with your power. Uh, saturate them with your mercy, with your grace, with everything you have. Uh, my God, we ask you right now uh, to touch this people. Uh, touch this church uh, and lift us up my God. Uh, for Father, we ask this now, uh, and we believe it, Lord. Uh, and Father, we thank you this morning uh, for the answers to prayer. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for hearing, uh, and Lord, for moving on our behalf. Uh, my God, supply every need. Uh, Lord, minister to every affliction, uh, every person. Lord, lift them up right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you believe God heard you this morning, would somebody shout amen this morning? My, 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 what a privilege it has been to be in the house of the Lord this morning.